So we are moving into module four. Um, we're going to be looking at housing expenses and we're starting with apartments. So we're talking about um, renting versus buying. Um, and this first lesson is just about renting an apartment and kind of the terms that go along with that as well as budgeting to um, make sure that we know kind of those expectations on how much you should budget to rent an apartment and all that. Um, so that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to start with just the terms that we want to know first from this uh, lesson. So the first one is the lease and um, hopefully these are familiar to you, but a lease would be what you sign with the apartment owner as like a contract to say that you're going to rent that apartment for this many months or however the case may be and at this price that they've set. Um, that's to protect you and the apartment owner um, if you're the one renting because if you have a signed lease during that time that the lease is covered they cannot raise the rent price on you um, and also during that time to protect them you can't just back out or move out and stop paying rent. Um, if you move out during the time of the lease, you're still gonna have to pay them rent unless there's some kind of buyout deal there. Um, but anyway, that, that is there to protect both sides. Um, and then the next one is the tenant, which is the which would be whoever's renting the apartment, whoever's gonna live in there. Um, and then the landlord would be the owner of the apartment. So those are the key terms. Um, some benefits to renting an apartment is that you don't have as much maintenance fees as if you bought a house. Um, typically, if you rent an apartment, if something goes wrong, it's kind of covered in your rental insurance where the landlord will cover the cost. Like if something breaks um, or something is, is, um, is, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. I don't want, if something is messed up with the apartment, um, typically those things are covered um, by your rental insurance or by the landlord themselves. But um, if you buy a house, those costs are on you because you own the house. Um, so there's less maintenance fees. Um, some of the drawbacks though from renting an apartment would be you have less control so if you buy a house, one of the first things a lot of people do is they start painting or they start adding things um, or even just hanging stuff on the walls. I lived in an apartment in college one time where I wasn't allowed to paint, first of all, which is usually a rule when you're renting an apartment, but I wasn't even allowed to hang stuff on the walls. I could not put a nail in a, in a wall in that apartment. So, um, so, you know, there's less freedom with customizing things and making it how you want it when you're renting an apartment. Um, and that's, again, to just kind of protect the landlord from um, unnecessary damage, things like that. All right, so let's get into the budgeting aspect of renting an apartment. So in the lesson, it talks about um, the budget percentage should be around 35% of your income that you should budget for an apartment and no more than that. So if you were to figure up an amount and it was, or if you were looking at an apartment and they gave you the rent amount and it was more than 35% of your income, then that's basically saying you should not rent that apartment um, because it would be too expensive. It'd be hard for you to manage the rest of your finances for things that you still need and want to spend money on. Um, so that's the number that they've come up with here, 35% of your income. So the problems in the lesson and the quiz and things are usually, or a lot of the problems are asking about um, whether or not you can afford a certain apartment and the assignment is gonna be that way too. So we'll just do a couple of examples here. Um, so let's just make up a situation. Let's say you have a job and that you make, um, $1,200 per month. This is your income. Okay, and you want to decide when you're looking at apartments what your top dollar is, what the top amount is of a rent that you can afford. 
So you want to just figure that amount right away. That way, when you're looking at apartments and they give you the, the rent price, you can automatically say, no, that's too high, or yes, this is within my budget. So I'll continue looking at this apartment. Okay, so we want to just go ahead and find 35% of that income, which was 1,200. So this goes back to kind of our percentages lesson, um, which I believe was back in the first semester of this course, um, where we were rewriting problems so that we could find percentages of whole numbers. That's what we're doing here, finding 35% of the whole number 1200. So what I said back then was that it's usually helpful for me. What I like to do is just rewrite it with only numbers and symbols. Um, I just, I have a math mind, so I automatically do that a lot of times, and I just think that it kind of makes sense. Um, and if you can get in the habit of doing it, it can slow, or it can uh, speed up the process. So 35%, we want to rewrite as a decimal. It's already a number, but we know percentages need to be rewritten in decimal forms. So we would, um, we would divide that by 100, okay, or we could just move the decimal two places, and this would be 0.35. The word of, does anybody remember what the word of by itself means uh, in an in a algebraic symbol in math? We can turn it into, instead of the word, we can turn it into one symbol, which would be what? Does anybody remember that? Would it be equal? Um, equal is more like is, the word is. Um, you're close, so that's a good guess. Of is multiply. So that means to multiply. So if you see the word of, you want to just automatically change it to the multiplication symbol. And then 1200 was already a number and it was a whole number talking about a dollar amount. So we don't need to change it at all. We're just going to bring it back in. So now we have an expression. We're going to simplify it, make it an equation because we can just multiply this. So 0 0.35 times 1,200 would leave us with $420. So this is the top rent amount that we could afford. So $420 or less. Anything above 420 is going to be more than 35% of our income, which means if we're using this as a guideline, we can't afford it. Okay, so when we're looking at apartments, we have to find one that's $420 or less in this example. Okay, now let's look at a different situation. Let's say the problem says, um, let's say our example, or sorry, our income this time, I'm going to put I for income, is $1,700. And let's say that we haven't figured up our budget yet. We just have, have a friend who lives in an awesome, apart, awesome apartment and we want to move there too. But the rent we already know is equal to $675. And we just want to know, can I afford it? Okay, can I afford this? So we're using the same um, guideline of the 35%. So basically we're asking is 675 equal to or less than 35% of 1700. Okay. So if it's, if it ends up being more than 35%, we know we can't afford it. If it's less than, or if it's equal to exactly, then we would say, okay, cool. We can afford it. So we're going to solve this one. So we can, we can do it a couple different ways. If you want to just go ahead and um, set it up where you just use the numbers that you have, you can do that. So this would be 675 out of 1700. You could just set it up that way and see what percentage that is. So what percent is 675 of 1700? Or you could do it the other way where we just go ahead and find 35% of 1700. So this is method one. Method two would be what is 35%, so 0 0.35 times 
1700. So either way, let's do it method one first. 675 divided by 1700, when we divide that, we get 0 0.397 and some other digits after that, but I'm gonna go ahead and convert that to a percentage. So what percent is that? Anybody know how to convert a, de a decimal to a percent? Yeah. Yeah, we would multiply by 100 or just move that decimal two places. So it'd be 39.7%. You could round it up to 40% or whatever you want to do there, but 39.7%. Well, if we compare that to 35, we can already tell it's more than 35. So we would say no. Okay, if we didn't want to do that method, if we wanted to do the first method where we just find 35% of 1700 and compare that amount to the rent that they've told us, then we would do it this way, method two, where we multiply 35% 0 0.35 times 1700 is equal to $595. So anything that is more than 595 is too expensive for us. So since this is 675, we would say, okay, that's above my budget so I can't afford this apartment. Does that make sense? Any questions over either of those examples? Okay, um, I have a quizzes link that I'm just going to put in the chat once I find it. Hang on. Okay. If you check the chat, you'll see it you should be able to click on that and get into the practice game. I'll give everybody a chance to jump in there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording anyway, since I'll just be watching.